Hello, welcome back to Into the Breach, episode 9. Now, through my, through my own silly fault, I was not correctly recording the image on screen here. So I was talking through some very awkward, fiddly bits of this mission up to this point, where we've managed to destroy, or have three buildings destroyed. But the video is not being recorded. And I don't think... A, uh, just hearing me waffle over a basically static image is going to be useful on YouTube. So I'm going to start the episode at this point, you know, in media rays. And uh, the rays are pretty uh, horrific at the moment. So the current situation, just to recap what has happened. So we spawned into this mission where... Our bonus objectives are to defend these two tanks, this one here, and this one here. We have managed to do that up to this turn. Uh, we've had two turns already, we have this turn and one more to go. We also have to protect the robot robotics lab, and it is still standing. We have, on the very first move, we got a shell sign, which was giving them everything armor, and uh, this alpha firefly, alpha digger, the blobber, and a lever. Not this one, but a different one. And so, we managed to destroy the Shell Scion, which was giving everything out, which is good, and the Leaper, and save the, both tanks in the first two turns. At this point now, we have also got an Alpha Scarab come up, we've got a new Firefly come up, and we've got a new Leaper uh, also popped out of the ground. And we've, we've, we last turn, we almost killed the Alpha Digger, but not quite. Uh, last turn, also Zappy Kill took damage from the Digger, which is it's not going to happen again. So, the current situation is, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to get, to make room for this tank to leave its spot. My current problem is, and this has been a problem on every turn so far, I've not been able to use uh, Prospero's Lightning Whip attack, because it chains through everything here, as you can see and will destroy the tank for me. Uh, well, for the Vec. Uh, it's like, I don't want it destroyed. The tank here really needs to be saved, but dealing two damage to it with the lightning will kill it. Which is not good. Not good at all. So, the only choices Zappy Kill has to avoid killing the tank is not use the lightning whip on any of these enemies, and, you know, they are bunched up so much that it's it would be very, very nice to do, but nice and, and, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, nice and killing one of our allies and voiding one of our objectives, they, they don't really go well together. So, I've been mulling over, can I get one of these rocks out of the way? For example, if... Bethany moves here and wastes her rock move there. Actually, that's no good. It would push that rock out of the way, but it would drop another rock here. So, the tank would still not be able to get away from this group. Like, the tank needs to not be adjacent to any of this group. Um, ideally, the tank just flies away, but that's not a, not a problem. Not possible. Uh, we could... Oh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. We could we could get rid of this rock, for example. By, for example, this tank could move here, shoot a scarab. The tanks have a weapon that just pushes an enemy. It doesn't do any damage unless, of course, the pushing is going to push it into something that causes damage. So this tank could move here, or, or rather there, so it's not in the path of the firefly shoot the alpha scarab which would push it into the rock it would destroy the rock would do two damage to the scarab and that would leave this path clear for this tank to move out so far so good now the downside of that is that means the chain between this whole group is kind of broken and maybe there's not very much i can do about that i would um but this tank would be free to get out of this spot, and at least the the, the the electric whip 
would be used to kill the blob and the digger, both of which are threatening this building, and both of which should die. Of course, this scarab is also threatening the building, so, you know, something's got to happen there. So that would leave me... So if I did that, that would be... This, this tank's turn used. Zappy Kill's turn used. Now this tank, when it moves out, could stop here. And shoot this Alpha Firefly, pushing it to the spot where this tank used to be. Which does nothing to this Alpha, fi alpha Firefly, but means the attack from this Firefly will hit the Alpha instead of hitting the robot, just hitting and probably destroying the robotics lab. So, both tanks moved, and Zeppi Kill's turn used, and that means both tanks are safe, Robotics Lab is safe, and then now we have two more threats, the Scarab here, and the Leaper. Now the Scarab will be down to two hit points, so we'll be able to drop a rock on it to kill it. Problem solved then the only threat remaining will be the Leaper. And ideally you'd say, well, Grapple Pi could come down here or something and pull it out of the way, but Grapple Pi is stuck. Last turn, I foolishly pulled this rock in front of Grapple Pi. At that point, the digger was sitting on this tile. And it had rocks all around it, and... Oh, sorry, it had rocks on two sides of it. It had one of... It had actually... Actually, Isabel was sitting there in, in Grapple Pi. And this tank was sitting here under threat both from the from the digger and actually from a blob that was sitting here and what happened is I dropped a rock on the digger which is why it's wounded to push the tank not so much to wound the digger but to push the tank from here to there so it was safe from the digger's attack and but before I did that I got Isabel to come up here in the corner pull the rock out of the way so that the rock so that I wouldn't push the rock into this building risking destroying the building because you know I it's bad enough that we can't always stop the vet from attacking buildings but I imagine it's a bit worse when uh, all the civilians looking out the windows see these giant mechs come to rescue them saying yay and then see the giant mechs actually damaging and destroying the buildings themselves at the very least it's got to be demoralizing um, for the civilians at worst it does raise the question of what you know who we're trying to save here so but the downside of that is now Grapple Pi is wedged in behind this rock with no means of destroying it because we used our artillery on the first turn to push things around and now Grapple Pi can't get out. Now, if I destroy the blob, which will end this, you know, the lightning will destroy the blob and this rock will and this rock. So if I bring Grapple Pi down here, that means next turn Grapple Pi can probably be useful. This turn, I don't see any way that Isabel's going to be able to do anything, let alone help deal with this Leaper. And there's no way that I can get any of the other enemy attacks to target the Leaper first. So I think I'm going to have to risk, let this Leaper take its attack and risk destroying a fourth building in this mission. Like all three damage that we've taken here was all this mission. We were on full when we started the mission. One of them, we, on the first mission, we accidentally used our airstrike to push a rock into a building and destroyed it. That was our bad. As I say, that's not what we should be doing here. We don't want that to happen again. The next two, last turn, there were two attacks that we couldn't prevent. And neither of them resisted. We, have a, we do have a reasonably high grid defense, 33% chance. But so far, you know, although I'd say one and three should have resisted. It was actually three for three got destroyed, you know. Odds, odds are a random chance that in the long, long run they will work out at one and three, but you know, for any given three, there's no chance, no guarantee that they'll all turn out any particular way. However, so that's enough waffle. So I can just kill these two, I can kill that one, I can hurt that one, I can neutralize this one's attack. Um which leaves only this attack going ahead. And I think that's pretty good, considering the number of enemies here and the very constrained position we're in. So let's begin. 
Move the sector out of harm's way. Move the scarab into harm's way. And uh, let's move this tank out of harm's way. Well, it's not actually under threat, but uh, move it from. It's not actually under threat from the back, but it is under threat from our lightning wreck. Let's move it here and move the Alpha Firefly into harm's way. Also, protecting the robotics lab. Now, Prospero can come here and finally use the electric whip, killing the digger and the blob and removing a pesky mountain or rock wall. So far, so good. Now, well, Isabel can get all the way over here right now, but again, that's not a position where the grapple can be of any use. We could grapple another rock in front of her to stop her moving anywhere next to her, and that would be ridiculously bad. Um, she can't fly, so she can't even move here to have grappled this guy in case Zappy Kill wasn't in the way, but Zappy Kill can't move out of the way anyway, so there's no way we can stop this attack with the grappling hook. We're going to have to do it by dropping a rock on them. As planned. So I'll do that. So we'll move here so so that Isabel's in a better position for next turn and just not use the grapple. And we'll drop a rock onto the scarab to kill it. Okay. So. We haven't been, do we haven't been doing amazingly well this mission and... Chances are we're going to lose another building this turn. Then we're on the final turn. I think the final turn, there's no new no new Vex uh, set to spawn. So on the final turn, I think we'll be able to, if not kill all the enemies, at least neutralize them all. Because we're down to four enemies and we have five units to at least do things with. And... Oh, actually... Oh, that rock got pushed out of the way. I can use the grappling hook to good effect. I can pull the blobber into the fire it'll set it on fire it'll do one to fire damage to it and it will probably move next turn anyway I hope let's do that, let's do some damage let's, you know that may mean Isabel can't move effectively next turn, but we'll see at the very least that's the blobber hurt that's some retribution at any rate all right, let's see what happens with the back. Fingers crossed, this building will resist. Nope. Oh dear, that was too... Oh dear, oh dear. So... My first mistake there was not remembering that although a Leaper only has one hit point, it attacks for three damage. Which means it destroyed two buildings, not just one. That means we've lost a total of five grid power this this mission. That's really bad. Now, we, with any luck, we will still have the two tanks alive at the end of this turn. And that'll be two uh, rep that we can spend at the end of the mission on getting that power back. That's end of the mission. Sorry, end of the island. We have to finish the whole island to make that effective. That's not looking good. So, the current situation. Um, the Alpha Firefly took fire damage and is threatening a tank. The Blobber took fire damage, which didn't matter. It fired out a blob anyway. The Leaper has webbed this tank so it can't move and is threatening it. The Blob is also threatening it. The Firefly is threatening Isabel, but that's okay because Isabel... It's, only, it's not even an alpha, so it won't do any damage uh, to Isabel. But also, Isabel can move out of the way. So, what are we going to do? I think the first thing that needs to happen... Well, let's see. If Zappy Kill moves out of the way somewhere... Anywhere, basically... And then Rockstar can drop a rock on top of the Leaper. Which will kill the Leaper, but also will push the 
tank out of the way, down to here. It doesn't matter. The web will be gone as soon as the tank, as soon as the leaf is done. So uh, that may not be the best use of the rock, but it will definitely free up this tank to move and do things. Uh, what else? Now we have this blob that's going to do one damage in all directions, so if for example this tank moves here and shoots it, it'll push it this way without hurting it, because the tank weapons don't do actually do any damage. Not very good tanks really, but you know, they're old. That means the blob will sit here and just hit the leaper and the alpha firefly. Now the attack order, unfortunately the blob is going to attack after the leaper, so that does not solve our leaper problem at all. We still have the problem of we need to do something about the Leaper in order to get the tank out of the way. Which is probably going to be a rock on its head. So, what else can happen? Isabel can actually move to different places now, but there's nowhere to move to pull enemies into the water because we can't get on the opposite side of the water. And I'm not immediately seeing any use for grappling hooks. The only attacks, we act, but nobody's attacking a building this turn. That's actually really important to notice, and not even blocked by anything. So as long as we get both tanks away from the current danger zone, we don't have anything to worry about. So it's now now a matter of how many of these enemies can we actually kill, uh, rather than uh, you know can we save the building? So thankfully we're not going to lose any more power. That's that's the good news. So a rock. On the leaper, we'll kill the leaper and free up the tank. I've got to obviously move Zappy Gill out of the way first. Then, this tank can shoot the blob there. This tank could shoot it into the Alpha Firefly. That will kill the blob and deal two damage to the Firefly. Then Zappy Gill can walk up to it. Well, we'll have to walk here first. And zap it. That means Alpha Firefly will be dead. Leaper will be dead. Blob will be dead. That's three three enemies dead. The Blobber is going to take one fire damage, but I don't think I can do anything more to it usefully. So two attacks, Rock and Lightning, uh, two enemies dead. Now, Grapple Pyre can actually sit here and pull this Firefly into the fire. Firefly will catch fire, and because it only has... Oh no, I'm, I'm misremembering. It's got three hit points. Setting it on fire will do nothing. And So that's silly. If we could push it into something, maybe we could hurt it, but pulling into the fire is kind of pointless. One one damage is neither here nor there. Can we kill either of these two with a grappling hook? I think the answer is no. Alternatively, let's say that with the two tanks, we push the blob here and we push the blobber up to there. Then Zappy Kill has to move here first because right now that's the only free space where we can free this tank from. Oh, we can't free this tank without killing the Leaper. Here's where I'm going wrong because I'm thinking then we've got all four enemies in a row. We can chain attack all of them. Two damage. No kill, but damage. Two damage kill, two damage kill, two damage kill. But that's not that's not going to do any good, and actually that means the other firefly does three damage, which means would leave Prospero in its line of attack and kill Prospero. That's really that's a really bad idea. Uh, so what can I do that's better? And besides, as I said, it won't work because we have to we have to hit the leaper, we have to push it to here or there, or kill it in order to, in order to get this tank able to move. Yeah. I'm not seeing any better options right now than my original plan to kill these three. So I guess that's just what I'm going to do. The Blobber and the Firefly will live to fight another day. 
I might set the Firefly on, on fire just out of spite. But I don't. Th I think that's all I can do to it. So, firstly, Prospero moves here to make room for the tank here to be pushed. Because unfortunately that's what's going to happen. Oh wait, wait, I can say, I can use, I can use Isabel to grapple the tank. Yeah, I can free the tank. I can free the tank. Okay. Interesting. That leaves my rock attack free, for example, to kill the blobber. Okay, let's do that. Isabel is useful. Great, two tanks. Um, now what are they going to do? Now I did suggest that one of them would come up, could come up here and shoot this to push it into line, which would be great. Uh, but these squares are both on fire, and that would set the tank on fire, which would be really bad because that would kill the tank as soon as the enemy turn begins. So, setting a tank on fire is not an option. Um, so, although the tank's free to move, we could of course go here and shoot the uh, blobber into a building, but that's that's a really bad idea. And we could push the leaper here, but then that means we can't even chain lightning yet. So, I'll tell you what we... We could come around here and shoot the Firefly into Grapple Pipe, but that only do two damage to the Firefly anyway. And we didn't set it on fire because we used our Grapple to free up the tank. So, what can this tank do? Anything useful? Not that I can see. So again, we can hurt the Firefly, but I don't think we can kill it. We have an extra tank move, but I don't think it's going to be relevant. However, this tank has some freedom to move. This one doesn't really. So, I'm going to use this tank to push the blob between those enemies. Now, Prospero gets to use the lightning attack for the second time this mission. And kill the leaper and the blob and hurt the Alpha Firefly for two. Oh, and I fucked that up. God, I fucked that up. Because now I can't kill the Alpha Firefly. At least not the way I planned to. I could drop a rock on it, but uh, this tank's annoying. So, uh, well, I was thinking that freeing up the tank with Isabel meant I had a chance to kill both the Blobber and the Alpha Firefly. But it's not really working out that way. Because now, if, if Prospero wasn't there... I could shoot... Well, okay, I could, actually. I could shoot... Well, no, no. Alright. This is fair. It'll do one damage to us. It'll do two damage to the, fly, to the Firefly Killer. You know. A mech is a big, massive object. And pushing it into somebody else is going to damage that other thing. And it won't kill Zappy Kill, so, you know, that's, that's fine. It's not entirely conventional to hurt your own units, but what the hell? Let's do it. Uh, and we actually leveled up over there. So, and finally, that means Bethany is free. Now we can drop a rock. We can kill either of these two with a single hit. Uh, I believe the XP is the same for both of them, because neither of them are alphas. The blob's not going to attack, this one is, but neither of them are going to do any damage that we care about. So, you know, six of one half doesn't the other. I might as well, just for the sake of it, uh, destroy the firefly, because it is threatening us. In theory. Right. Okay, that was better than I expected. So, no new buildings lost. All our objectives protected. One enemy left on the board. Not the best, but uh, sufficient. 
and that enemy takes fire damage but doesn't die. Oh dear. Well, that was a mission and a half, but unfortunately uh, you only saw half of it. And once again, that's me, me fucking up and I apologize and we'll try and make sure that doesn't happen again. So, if every battle against the Vec results in that much damage, I don't think there'll be much left of Archive to help in the war. Well, you're quite right, because, uh, unfortunately, we've, all, we've gone from really good shape on the power grid to almost dead, and that's... Almost entirely... Like, everything was really tied up in the middle here. And the tanks were in the middle of that. And the first two moves of the game, the tanks couldn't even move. They were just there, you know, one hit point objects that we had to protect. And because of that, all the enemies were bunching up around the tanks, around the buildings, and I couldn't use our lovely electric whip that chains through everything because it would have killed the tanks. It's the worst, probably the worst possible weapon to have for the way that mission was <laughs> turned out to be set up. Um, so it was really hard to get through the first couple of couple turns at all without the tanks dying, and uh, let alone without losing some buildings in the way. So we lost five buildings. Uh, Isabel did level up though. That's nice. We protected just over half the civilians. We did defend both tanks, so basically I'm going to be spending that rep, I'm pretty sure, on uh, getting some power back. We did get a core, so we can do an upgrade. I'm not sure it was worth it. Now we go, that means we've got a total of four rep, so we can get an upgrade almost the way up to where it was if we don't want to spend any on anything else, which is, you know. That's probably what we're going to spend it on, is the grid. So, let's see what happens next. Promoter, new skill, plus two HP for the mech, nice. Okay, so... If I'm looking at these remaining areas, I immediately see Ohm Town has... A little lightning bolt, it has a grid power bonus, uh, what do you call it, prize, I guess. Objective. The prize for protecting the emergency batteries is we'll get one grid power back. So if we want to get back up to full grid power, we need to do Ohm Town. Well, alternatively we can do storage vaults and spend it all on... Spend all our rep on, the, you know, five of our rep on there. Or spend four of our rep and take this power. The advantage of doing Ohm Town now is we have that power grid back immediately we don't wait for till we finish the corporate HQ which is gonna be which is gonna come up next. And so if that comes back immediately that, that puts us in slightly better shape for when we actually tackle the corporate HQ. So normally I would uh, stop the episode here but because I only actually started recording the video uh, more than halfway through the uh, you know it was about 40 minutes past seven or something uh, I'm going to continue on for a little bit and then, uh, so I'm going to go continue on, do I'm down, and then probably call this an episode. And I'll see, I'll see how things look then and decide whether I'm doing a second episode this evening or, or not. So we've got a reactor call. Let's first review if we can spend that anywhere useful. So, yeah. So, uh, Zappy Kill. Had an option to change through buildings, uh, but does not have an option to make allies immune from the electric whip, which is what would have been really useful on the previous mission. So too bad. Uh, building change is nice to have. Uh, it is situational, it depends on the layout of the map as to whether it's very useful or not. If you've got isolated buildings standing on their own in the middle of, with space all around them, such as in the uh, little gift there, then it can be in immensely useful. If your buildings are much more around the edge of the map, then not so great. Now the Vice Fist, uh, I've been, I used that a little bit in the last mission, but unfortunately before I stopped recording so you didn't see it. It has an option to make allies immune, so you can use it on an ally to move them without hurting them. Now, occasionally an ally gets stuck, so it can't move itself, or you want to move it for some other reason, but uh, it's so rare. Like, that, that, would, that would like free it from a web or something, or move it away from an environmental uh, damage area. But it's so rare that I want to actually use it on an ally that it seems a waste when I have very few power cores to use it on that. In some ways I'd rather, you know, 
spend three cores here, I could turn off the electric whip and get an extra core, and then get extra damage for that, for example. Uh, but, I don't think I want that. I mean, like, uh, the electric whip is amazing. So, I don't think I'll spend the core on Zappy Kill. What does Grapple Pie have? Grapple Pie has an option on the grappling hook to shield an ally. Now, last turn that could have been re really useful. Occasionally, maybe one on once or twice to shield the tanks. But there was never really space to use it, so not really an option. And the AS strike unfortunately doesn't have any upgrades. Rockstar. We could give Rockstar more health. Now Rockstar already has a shield thanks to Bethany's special ability here. But plus your health is not a big problem to have. Uh, I don't think you need it. We've already got the damage upgrade here. I'm probably going to actually save this reactor core so that I can get like plus one damage or there or plus two damage there. I can't, can't really get any damage here. There's a possibility also we might get uh, some bonus weapons or something and need a reactor core to power them. So for the moment, I'm not going to spend the reactor core. Let's have a look at hometown. So we've got a few buildings stuck in the middle here. So if enemies are on two sides of these, building chain to use the lightning whip on them could be quite useful. So let me just double, double check. Do I want building chain? I could get building chain instead of the move and not have to spend my core. On the other hand, if I'm saving my core to get extra damage for Zappy Kill, which is what I'm doing, though, pretty much. I don't, I don't really mind about getting extra weapon beneath power or whatever. Uh, mostly I'm trying to save my core to power one of these. And so if I install it here in Zappy Kill, that's fine. I get my move, I get my building chain, and when I get two more movement here, I can turn off building uh, two more cores. I can turn off building chain and get plus one damage. So let's do that. Let's 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 use it here on. Well, whatever you know. Whichever way it goes, we use the new core on building chain. And let's go tackle him down. We recently got a few old Earth jets in the air. My people aren't the most skilled pilots yet, but they're getting the hang of it. So we need to kill at least seven enemies and protect the emergency batteries, which is there. And there's air support. A bomber will periodically target areas of the map. So let's do it. So immediately we have a shell scion giving armor to all enemies and an alpha firefly. We also have a bog standard, ordinary digger, and a leaper. So two, three really weak enemies and an alpha firefly. Now, unfortunately, the armor means that our electric chain, even if we chain through all of these, it would kill the Leaper and the Scion, but not the Digger, because the armor would protect it. But, so we'll see what, we'll see what we need to do. I will start with what? Hmm. Let's try that. So, I'll use Grapple Pie free to move around and grapple things, pull things this way or pull things this way. Obviously, Rockstar sitting up the back to, throw, to be able to throw rocks on anyone, and Zappy Kill up here in the middle of the battle so, so that they can run around and zap Arthur uh, Beck. The only thing I'm thinking alternatively is maybe I start there. If I start there, that probably increases the chance that, like, oh, the digger can't move here. I'm just wondering, like, you know, can we tempt? No, that's right. We'll start here. We'll, we'll try and hope, hope some of these enemies bunch up together, and we can electric whip them at the same time. That's really all we can hope for. All right, let's 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 play some X like that. Oh, we got a time pod. That's nice. That might give us a bonus reactor core or something. Alright, digger. Okay. Leaper. Ouch. Alright, so. Problems to solve. So, firstly, the time pod is not under the threat this turn, so maybe not a problem for us. The 
Emergency batteries absolutely are under threat and definitely a problem for us. There's no enemies bunched up for the lightning whip, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, that's the way it goes somehow, sometimes. And none of the enemies are standing in the airstrike zone. So, the air support is bombs will be dropped on the marked spaces, killing any unit. So, we obviously don't want to stop there. But, for whatever reason, the enemies also decided not to stop on the uh, air support spaces. That's a nuisance. So, what am I thinking of doing? Uh, I'm thinking. I'm actually thinking we leave the Shell Scion alone just for now. What we do instead, Grapple Pike can move here and pull the Alpha Firefly onto the spawn stop the spot. That will firstly stop a new enemy spawning there next turn. It also means the Alpha Firefly will. Oh no, wait, what am I thinking? The Alpha Firefly is firing down this line. That would mean it hits the building. Sorry. Abort, abort plan, abort plan. Uh, it sounded nice. What's the damage? Three. Yeah. It sounded nice, but I don't really think that's an option. Because uh, it attacks before the damage from the spawn happens anyway, so... Well, let, let's say, it, let's just say, if I did that, and pulled it there, and Zappy kill, we freed him somehow, and stood Zappy kill here to tank three damage out of his available five hit points. Not good. Not a good idea. But then he could zap the Alpha Firefly and, and kill it. No, I don't think, I don't think, I no longer think this is a good plan. Uh, I can't get down here in order to pull it into the airstrike zone. I can't actually pull anything into the airstrike zone because this just can't get anywhere. That's a shame. Can I push anything into the airstrike zone? No, because of these damn rocks. They're going to get destroyed anyway, but... Uh... So, I'm thinking I need to drop Bethany's rock onto the digger. It'll kill the digger, it'll do three damage, minus one for the armor, and so and it's only got two hit points. And it will push Zapikil this way. So if I move Isabel out of the way first, that will free Zapikil from the Leaper. So Zapikil will be free to have... do whatever. Do I want to do that? No, I don't want to do that. I have just reconsidered. And I'll tell you why. Because I realize I can I can come up here and drop a rock on the shell scion to kill it. Then the enemies won't have armor. Then I can use my electric whip, which chains through these rocks. And the buildings, incidentally, but uh, there'll be nothing to chain through the buildings into. Which means we'll kill the digger and the leaper and destroy both rocks as it happens with a single move. Yeah, that's much better. That's three enemies dead, leaving only the Alpha Firefly for next turn. Which means all this space will be well, not that space, but all this space will be cleared up. Which means Isabel will have a much freer ch chance to move. Um, the question is then becomes what to do with that move. Here's a question in my head. Can I use grapple on a building to move myself? I can. Okay, let's undo that. I'm thinking then, with all that space clear, if Isabel moves here just to collect the time ball, just to make sure it's safe. Oh no, what am I thinking? Grapple to this building so we're out of the way of the firefly attack, but sitting in for range of the airstrike to be killed. No, what What an idiot. What an idiot. Who thought of this? Uh, well... Well, let's think again. So, Isabel has four movement points. So, with the space, with all the space clear, we'll be able to, for example, get here to grapple the Firefly. There's no point. There's no point. You can't grapple to the edge of the map, so if I sit here, I am going to take two damage. Lots of hit points here now, thanks to the plus two we got, plus, and the plus two that we're powering with one of our air cores, so, and one armor. So, you know, tanking two damage, I'm, uh, well, three damage, minus one armor, taking two hit points to save the time pod is actually something I'm willing to do. So, that's probably just what I'll do anyway. On the other hand, let's say, if, if you look at the light, if I lightning whip 
somewhere where it can chain through Isabel. Take she'll, she'll take one damage from from the lightning. So if I sit there first, she will take one damage from the lightning, but she'll also chain it through to do two damage to the Alpha Firefly, putting it on three hit points. So that means Isabel. It'll still get us attack off, so Isabel will be down three, so she'll have a total of four hit points left. I think that's pretty good for the rest of the, of the rest of the game. I think that's perfectly acceptable, especially since she still has armor. And that means we'll have done some damage to the Alpha Fire, Firefly at the same time as we kill these two. Yeah, this is this is this is looking like an actual plan now. Let's do it. Right, enemy armor destroyed. Let's save the time pod. Safely secured. Uh, we won't use our grapple yet because there's nothing to grapple. We will lightning whip everything that we can see. I'm sorry, Isabel, uh, but it's for the good of the many. And we got an achievement. Uh, well, I didn't see what it was, but a chain attack. But achievements mean we get bonus coins, which make which we can spend on new squads in some subsequent games. So that means next game I can probably afford a new squad and play with different units. All right, so Bethany's had a turn. Zepikil's had a turn. Grapplefy can has a grapple left, but that we do not want to do that. Just to save ourselves from the fire. Like, really, but really bad idea, and we can't use it anywhere else. So we're just going to leave the grapple unspent. Next turn, we'll have three enemies to deal with. Let's see how it plays out. Boom! Ouch! Alpha Scarab and an Ordinary Scarab. Alright, so... The bad news first. Bad news, the Alpha Scarab is threatening building. So we're going to have to do something about that. Uh, the good news, the Scarab is threatening an empty spot of land as soon as we've moved out of the way. Great. Other good news, the Alpha Firefly is, sitting, is attacking also empty land once we move out of the way. And it's sitting in an airstrike zone, so it will, uh, die. The, uh, environment attack will happen before any enemy actions anyway, so its attack is meaningless. It's gonna die. Uh, that also means our damage to our last turn was kind of meaningless, but we did, we did protect the time pod, and there's no guarantee that an enemy wouldn't have gone and stepped on it this turn and, and destroyed it for us, so that's good. So what can we do about the scar? We can lightning it for two, we can drop a rock on it, for three, so we can definitely kill it. Uh, the other thing I'm thinking about is we can move uh, Isabel here and pull the Scarab into the airstrike zone so it will die as well. And neither of them will get a chance to get their attack off there. So we'll have killed the Scarab. We'll have killed all three enemies that are currently on there. We'll have three brand new ones for the next turn. That will use all our actions. A rock, a lightning whip, or... Actually, I don't even need to use the rock on it. I can drop a rock on one of these spots and save us dealing with an enemy next turn. We do have to kill at least seven. We're going to kill all three of this, this this turn. So that'll be six, and then we're going to have to kill one more to get that objective. So that's... We're going to do that. So definitely stopping another enemy spawning. And it's not going to be this one, because any, any enemy that spawns there will be on fire. So it'll probably be that one who's the closest to being a nuisance. What I've just realized, Prospero has this amazing ability. Ta-da! Oh look, also in the airstrike zone. Ta-da! In the airstrike zone. Not only are all their attacks now useless, they're also all gonna die even before they get their attacks off. I'm loving this. I am loving this. And let's drop a rock here to stop an enemy spawning. Great! I mean, I say I'm loving it. We're still in pretty bad shape, but, uh, you know, this turn's not shaping up so badly. Kaboom! I love it. Oh, look, a Leaper is on fire. It's an Alpha Leaper, unfortunately, so it means it won't die immediately, because uh, it's got more than one hit point. But, it does mean uh, we do need to do less damage to it. It's got three hit points. And the very first thing that's going to happen is it's going to take 5 damage to put it down to 2. So if we can do 2 damage to it, that's enough to kill it. So we have another airstrike zone. Ready, with an enemy ready to be pulled into it. 
So we're gonna have, we're gonna have another free uh, attack here, you know. A rock to throw somewhere. Fairly meaninglessly. So another enemy spawning in the fire. Great. I love it when enemies spawn in fire. Once you spawn into the airstrike zone, but the airstrike will happen first, so it's, that's irrelevant. Without moving, Isabel can already pull this firefly into the airstrike zone. So why not do it? And actually, we can do the same move, we, the same two moves we did last turn, <laughs> and, and kill all the enemies this turn that are, have appeared this turn. Uh, why not? Why? Why not? Uh, I can actually drop a rock and now kill it anyway. Or I can drop a rock here and kill another enemy. XP is nice and all, but I would, to be honest, I would prefer having fewer enemies to deal with. So let's make sure we're only going to get two enemies to deal with. One here, because that will be clear once the uh, leap is dead. And one here. Kaboom! And another level up. Alright, we have an ordinary leaper that's on fire, I think. And we got a blobber. Yeah, it's an ordinary leaper, so it's just gonna die from fire. The blob, we do need to destroy the blob. The airstrike zone is the same place, so the blobber is gonna die. So all we need to do is destroy this blob for one hit point. Um, and the lightning attack is probably the simplest way of doing that. To be honest, there's no reason not to just do it immediately. The Leaper will die from fire. The Blobber, well, we can drop a rock on it if we want to. All that die from the airstrike, either works. Uh, Isabel's max level anyway, so XP is not going to matter. Prospero's max level, and actually just got a plus one move. Uh, all of them are max level now, so XP is kind of meaningless at this point, I think. So yeah, I think I think we're done this turn. The leaper will die from fire. The blob will die from the airstrike. Well, we had two. We could have let another enemy spawn because we have two units who haven't even done anything this turn. Uh, so pretty much, pretty sure we could have uh, killed one more enemy, or at least nudged it, pulled it, or pushed it into the airstrike zone. That's fine. We've killed more enemies than our objective anyway. So let's let it play out. Burn. Die. Hooray! So, no buildings were damaged in the making of that mission. Which is good news for us, because we could not really afford many, much more building damage. Uh, we killed at least seven enemies, so we got one, one more rep. We protected the emergency batteries, so we got a bonus power. And we protected the time pump, which was unexpected. Uh, so we have a bonus from the time park. We saved all the civilians there, and we got a promotion for Prospero, who can now move one further space. Let's see what's in the time pod. It is a weapon, I think, or something of some kind. It's reactor core first, which is great for upgrades, and pull tank, any class weapon. Single use for battle, but deploy a pull tank that can pull targets with a projectile. So it's essentially like the, it has... A weapon that's like the grappling hook. Okay. Uh, the pull tank requires two power to use it. That's quite a lot of power. Uh, then for extra, its upgrades can give the pull tank more health and make it able to fly. So, you know, that could be a really useful thing. It gives you an extra unit. Not to sneeze at having an extra unit on the board to be able to uh, take actions. Uh, nothing to sneeze at at all. Prospero has been promoted and can move one further. That's great. Uh, that actually probably frees up a power core that we were using for plus one move for a damage upgrade, which could also be great. Alright, now the least three regions are lost and the corporate HQ is under attack. So we'll have a look at that in just a minute. So. We don't have quite enough power cores right now. Uh, we could install one more. Well, we actually, actually we could if we don't want to fly. If we don't want to fly... If we install one more, decide not to fly, and only move four, which is fine, then we can get a damage upgrade on the electric lift. Alternatively, we could trade building chain for flying or moving. We're just going to do that for now. 
It did not do this. Okay, let's reassign it. Okay. Before I decide that, can we use power here? Now, pull tag's nice, but force amp is amazingly useful for dealing two damage to lots of two enemies at once, or sometimes more. Uh, this, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get rid of that passive effect. Deploying a pull tank from Grapple Pie almost seems redundant. I mean, I could do it. What I, what I can do is test it out, right? So, if we deploy a pull tank with limited spots to deploy it to, that's interesting. Right, and then the pull tank itself has one hit point, has uh, three movements, so it can't move very far, but it can move. And its weapon pulls one enemy, so basically works exactly like the grappling hook. Oh no, it pulls up one tile. Ugh. Doesn't work at all like the grappling hook. That's a lot less useful than I thought it would be. There's some places where pulling an enemy one tile means it's attack misses something or hits something else better. But that's... Uh, I'm, no longer com I'm no longer thinking... Yes, an extra unit on the board is great, so that's four actions instead of three. As long as we're willing to sacrifice our action on the first turn to, to deploy it. And then as long as we can protect it afterwards. And... Especially since we've got this lightning whip that just does damage to everything in the chain. The chances are that it, we, you know, it would come under threat from our own lightning. And it only pulls things one tile. I think I'm done testing. I think, I think I don't, I think I'd rather keep the uh, artillery, which immediately only does one damage and pushes things in four directions. And we don't have enough push abilities. We have a pull, a great pull, but we don't have enough pushes. So, I'm thinking, uh, to keep the artillery and not use the pull tank at all. Maybe if we had more cores to spare, but I, don't, I really don't think it's worth two power. So. Now, the other thing I could do is redeploy, go back down to five health and get our shield. So that we have the ability to shield an ally, such as a tank or some other thing we have to defend, um, if we need to. Actually, uh, done testing. Hang on a second. What I'm going to do? What I'm going to do temporarily? Just, just to test that that shield thing. I'm going to temporarily test in this. I'm going to test in this setup. So we de deploy the pull tank, and then do we shield it? Yes. So, for example, the tanks that we had uh, in the previous mission. Sorry, not the previous mission. The previous but one uh, could have done with the shield. The shield on a vulnerable ally makes a lot more sense. So let me just undo that install and swap back. So if I stay with five health instead of seven, still quite a lot for, for tanking attacks if we need to. Let's just tank one or two attacks. We do have the ability now to deploy a shield on the ally if we, if we need to. Which again could be the difference between an ally being destroyed or not taking any damage at all. So that's good. And we have we still have our reactor cross spare. Uh, we could spend it here, but I still think the two health with the study shield is, is sufficient right now. And there's a lot of cores here already. I think I'm thinking install a core here. Let me just see what the map looks like. So we have some buildings in the middle with a lot of space around them. That looks like there's potentially a good chance for building chain. We do have a Firefly leader to deal with. Uh, so the more chains we can get, the more chain attacks we can get, the better. Now the other thing is this huge pile of lump of stuff in the middle is going to be a real pain in the ass to get around, to move around. So flying is on uh, Achilles app is also good because as we found out on the, on the previous mission, uh, we can fly through or past obstacles. We can't stop on them, but, but uh, well, as I can demonstrate, when we have flying, uh, a move, a move like this goes straight through the obstacles. You know, the buildings do not get in our way for movement, and that could be really good on this mission. So I think I want to keep flying. Unfortunately, I can't keep building chain and flying. That's that's the problem. So which is more useful? 
If these were just a block of four buildings in the middle, then absolutely building chain would be more useful. As it is, building chain will might be coming handy if there's enemies on two sides of one of these buildings. But I think flying means we'll be able to move from side to side. So I think flying is probably going to be of more use here. And I do I do want to get my extra damage. I think it's going to make all the difference. Uh, four move. Four move. Plus some damage. Alternatively, I can keep the electric with a two damage and turn this one into three damage. This was more situational. You have to have space behind you. And honestly, three damage to a bunch of enemies sounds like a brilliant idea. Let's, let's test it. Hello, friends. Welcome. Look at that. That's, that is going to be amazing. I love it. I love it already. Okay. So... Zappy Gill's done, Grapple Fire's done, Rockstar's done. Let's go to the corporate HQ. Some kind of Vec abomin abomination is approaching our headquarters. Whatever it is, it must be stopped. We must destroy the Firefly Leader and protect the corporate tower. So let's go and get it done. Firefly Leader has three movement has six hit points and does four damage. It launches goo projectiles in two directions. So it probably loves to like sit somewhere like here between two different things and aim at both of them. That's that's nasty. Um, right, apart from that, well, okay, it can walk through water, but there's no water on this map, so that's irrelevant. We have a ordinary leaper. So the downside of leapers is they can leap over obstacles. So they can easily get around to the outside of the map. We have an Alpha Leaper. Now, it's a bit too far back to get to outside of the map on the first turn. So that's nice. Uh, and we have an Ordinary Scar, which obviously launches its attack across the map if it needs to. There's the only one that's more than three hit points is Firefly Leader. So, fingers crossed, these four are all going to be lined up together. And we can just throw some lightning at them. I don't think that's going to happen. But we can hope. And we can but hope. Alright. Now I think the Zappy Kill and Grapple Pie should probably start on opposite sides. I don't know. I really don't know. I guess we'll find out. We'll see what the enemies want to do. Just want to make sure that uh, this Leaper can't go in, in mesh uh, Rockstar at the start. Because Rockstar being able to move around is really useful. Really important. Now this one is probably going to come up here and mesh Zappy Kill. But perhaps... Hmm. Well, I don't know what the enemy is going to do. I really don't know what they're going to do. Grapple Fire has four movement. I'm actually going to start there. This is probably unconventional, but I'm going to try it. Let's see what they do. Alright, Firefly Leader stays a long way away. But good news is... The good news is none of our units are under threat. Uh, the bad news is there's... Five damage there, three damage here, plus one damage there, plus if we're not in the way, four damage there. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six buildings under threat. So we must deal with all of these enemies this turn. The attack order. The Alpha Firefly goes first, so we may be able to push it to... It does what? Four damage. So yeah, we could potentially push it this way and make it destroy the Alpha Leaper for us. That'd be one neutralized. There'd be two problems gone. Uh, that would be nice. That leaves us with these two enemies destroyed. Now they're weak, so... Absolutely, I could, my lightning attack, attack could get them. But even with my flying, I don't have quite enough movement to get right over there this turn because I'm one tile too far back. So I can't lightning them this turn. 
I could lightning this one. Uh, if we push these two together, I can lightning them both, uh, but I don't want to because killing this one means the firefly would then hit the buildings again, and that would be the same problem all over again. Unfortunately, Grapple Pie is not in a position to grapple all much. Well, we could grapple, come here and grapple this enemy to there. That means instead of using the rock or artillery to push this around, that's that's actually better. That's better than wasting an artillery or a rock just to push the fire blade either. So using the grapple. That leaves the rock free. One, two, three. No, we still can't get over here and, and zap them. How can we deal with these two? We can certainly drop a rock on one of them and kill you. Uh, we can't get into position to use either of our weapons because they're both ranged next to us. If either of these attacks are to happen, we let the Scarab happen, because there's only one damage. It's the weakest of the lot, and the best chance that it'll be resisted. Ideally, we get them both. But how? Uh, the only way... Alright, we could push them into each other. Let's say we push them into each other. That would kill them both. So, the only way I have to push them into each other is an airstrike on this tile. Okay, that can kill too. That might be worth using an airstrike for. If we do that, then we can drop a rock here. Well, we, we can move up here, we can drop a rock on this spot to hurt, uh, to push the uh, Alpha Leaper, sorry, my, my brain's going dead, to push the Alpha Leaper into the path of the Five Lion. That means the Firefly, which attacks first, will kill the Leaper, and the Leaper won't attack anything. But not that there's anything to attack. Uh, that means we won't have hurt the Firefly at all, but we'll have used Isabel's turn and Bethany's turn. That leaves Prospero. So the very first thing before we do this, if Prospero runs up here and uses lightning on the Firefly leader, we'll do we'll do three damage to it. That'll half kill it. It won't chain and kill the Leaper, so we're still able to push the Leaper into the way. And we'll have a half dead Firefly, we'll have these three enemies dead, and two new ones next turn. I think that's I think that's nice. I think that's good. Zap! So although I said I wasn't gonna use my artillery, it turns out I am actually gonna use my artillery. Now, sitting back here, I think is pretty useless. I'm gonna move up a little. I could move up as far as here. Because the Leaper will push it away so I won't get attacked by the Firefly. And the Leaper will take the shot before it can attack me. So that's that's safe for Isabel to sit. And that just means a little more maneuverability next move, next turn. So let's let's use our artillery. It uh, We've only got one shot, but to kill two enemies at once with it. And especially two enemies where we can't kill one of them any other way. And that does two damage to each of them thanks to the passive ability uh, that we have in Rockstar. So, these buildings are safe. Now we just need to make this building safe by dropping a rock. Great. And unfortunately this mountain's going to get hurt, but, uh, you know, it's just a mountain. Bang. Right, so we have a digger and an alpha firefly. Well, the Digger is, as usual, making itself a nuisance. The Alpha Firefly, we don't care, we can move out of the way. The Digger, it builds rock walls around it, so that kind of makes it hard to do anything about. So, options. Alpha Firefly has five hit points. I don't know that we can kill it in one turn. Now, on the plus side, our Lightning does chain through all of these rocks. So, you know, this is a very tempting thing to do. Actually, this is absolutely the thing we should do. I will kill the digger, thanks to its rocks, not, which normally make it hard to get at. Uh, I will kill the Alpha Firefly, and I will hurt the... Sorry, I'll kill the Firefly leader. I'll hurt the Alpha Firefly enough that we can drop a rock on it to kill it. Problem solved. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
Why not? Why not? Hello there! Right, now the other question is, do I want to move Isabel somewhere else? I think here, let's... No, I think she's good here. Right now, if we get, say, a leaper that spawns and moves up here, Isabel's in a position to pull it out of the way. And in a position to get down here and pull things sideways. I don't think there's any benefit to me in this row. Sappy Kill has moved, Prospero has moved, so... Grapple Fire is the only one that isn't moving this turn. Let's see what the Vector come up with next. A Scion of some kind, Shell Scion, and a Scarab. Both very weak. Both very weak. And three new enemies next turn. Alright. So, how do I want to do this? We want to kill them both? Um, one, two, three, yeah. The only downside of this is I'm going to have to sit on a spawn spot and take damage in order to kill one of them. It's not a big deal. Oh, I didn't upgrade, I didn't upgrade that. Oh, but it's still armoured. Let's, let's get rid of the armour. Armour gone. Alright, now, die. Wow, three damage is great. Uh, Grapple Fire has nothing to do, so that's fine. Let's see what, they, what the last two pick are. Alpha Firefly, Alpha Blobber. I do not like Blobbers. Because they throw blobs. And I like Alpha Blobbers even less because the blobs they throw do three damage. However, and it's actually quite, quite tough there. It's got four hit points. However, we can certainly come up here and pull the blob to... A spot like this that's reasonably harmless. We can take three hit points and grapple pie just fine. One will be absorbed by the armor and she'll have three hit points left and it's the last turn so uh, no problem there. Now the blob only has one hit point so we, if we hit it for any damage at all it'll be dead. So that might actually happen anyway. What I'm trying, what I'm thinking of is, is there a way, so right now we could, we, could kill. we turned off building chain right so we can't chain through the buildings. I was just thinking I had it on, but no. My bad. Can we kill either of these two? Not that it matters, their attacks don't matter. This is the only attack that matters this turn, so... I can't drop a rock on it because it's too close. So, absolutely, let's just, let's just nullify that attack. It'll hit us, no problem. But, it will not hit any buildings. So, the only question is, can we kill either of these? And the answer is we can kill whichever one we want, because we can do six damage. Uh, we can't kill both. So let's just kill the Firefly. Uh, the Blob is only four hit points. I don't think it really matters whether we kill one or the other, or neither. But we might as well. Getting extra XP when you're max level, as far as I know, there's absolutely no benefit to it. So, we're gonna win. So that extra three damage on that lightning whip makes uh, killing these leaders so much easier. Usually they're much tougher. With the Vec Abomination destroyed, no new hives should appear on our island. You've saved us. So we got two rep, one for destroying the Firefly leader, one for protecting the tower. We lost no more buildings, so we're still on three power. And nobody leveled up because they're already, already on maps. Perfect island, you accomplished every archive mission. Okay, that's all the bonus objectives. An astounding accomplishment. Please, you and the Blitzkrieg accept this as thanks. So, so he's going to give us some free stuff. So, it says perfect. Now, we lost at least, what? We lost five buildings there, all in one mission. No, two missions. No, one mission. It was all in one mission in two turns. Sorry, one mission, two turns, we lost five buildings. So, I really don't think it's quite perfect. But as far as the corporation is concerned, well, we did all their bonus objectives, so they're going to give us stuff. I'm not going to say no. So we can choose. We can get another pilot. Harold Schmidt. His special ability. Push adjacent tiles when repairing. That's kind of neat. Because normally a repair is something you do as a last ditch to save yourself from dying. Because you, you have to choose between making an attack or repairing. 
But if your if your repair pushes your adjacent tiles, presumably all four, I don't know for sure, then you can, if you need to repair, you can go somewhere where the push is useful and then repair. And essentially, you know, you're not doing any damage, but a push, well, sometimes a push can do damage itself, but even so, a push is often all you need to do. Or we can get plus two grid power, uh, which I'm very tempted to do, because we need four to get back to four. Or we can get, I don't know what it is, a shield projector, science class weapon, shield tiles from damage. So that's a science class weapon. Unfortunately, we don't have any science class mechs, so we cannot make any use of that whatsoever. So, actually that's a lie. We could use it. No matching mech class applies, one power penalty applies. So it takes two power to power it, two, two cores instead of one. We could use it. Shields, two tiles, and two uses for battle. It's actually not bad. That'd be really good with a science class. You could uh, protect a lot of things. But, I don't have a science class mech. I don't have two power to spare to power it up. And we definitely need grid power. So I'm just going to take the grid power. We don't need pilots. We've got two pilots already sitting in our uh, pilot lounge, aka storage. And so we don't need another. However good his ability is, it'd be nice to have his ability. Uh, Especially when just starting out, when your mech's quite vulnerable and repair is more often needed. But we're going to take the power. Thank you very much. And we have seven reputation to spend. Now, I thought we were going to have to spend four on our power, but we got two just there. So we're going to spend... Pretty much, I'm guaranteed, I think, I'm going to spend two on power. And see what else we're going to spend on. Now, we have... We can donate... Uh, the weapons we don't want, and the pilots we don't want to get more rep. And that'll let us buy more cores or other weapons. So I will think about that. So in theory we have up to ten... Oh wait. Yeah, those are all equipped. So we have one weapon not equipped, two pilots not equipped. In theory, we could get up to ten rep to spend, which would be two cores plus four, which is great. Uh, two cores, two power, plus two. So what are these things on sale? Uh, there's a Sidewinder Fist for the Prime. Punch an adjacent tile, damaging it and pushing it to the left. Who's left? Uh, I guess left relative to the attack that you're making. Uh, it takes one power to do it. Right now we have... It does two damage, which is nice. And it pushes it in an interesting way. Like, normally you can't push... We don't have anything else that can kind of push... In a direction sideways relative to where you're standing. So that's kind of neat. Right now we've got the Vice Fist equipped, which I'll just review... Uh, the Vice Fist grabs the unit and tosses it behind you. You have to have a free, a clear space behind you for it to be used. And it does only one damage. We can bump it up to three, but, but it takes three cores, which is going to wear a long way off having available. So we'd have to swap out the Vice Fist. Uh, oh, I'm not swapping out the little three electric web. So we'd have to swap out the Vice Fist to use this. So the question is, would it be worth it? The Vice Fist doesn't take power, so we would still need to spend a power core to get it. I'm more inclined, if I, if I get more cores here, to spend them on move and building chain than... Or even health, right, to tank better. Or than on a second weapon. So I think I'm going to leave this be. This one. Astro Bombs, Brute Class. Leap over any distance, dropping a bomb on each tile you pass. Only one use for battle, and it only does one damage, so if... and it takes power. So if you have a long line of enemies, and you want to get to the other side of them, you can do one damage to all of them. Eh, it's not convincing. What secondary weapon we have right now is Tiger Strike, which again is one damage, but can target any tile on the map and push things, and that has saved our bacon a lot. It's a lot more versatile, I think, than these Astro Bombs, and both of them are only a single use. Uh, there's a sale on oh, another brute class weapon, the Unstable Cannon. It's a powerful projectile that causes damage to the shooter as well as the target. Now it does two damage, plus one self damage. A two damage cannon is not bad, not bad at all. Right now, the airstrike is the only way that uh, Lauren, sorry, Isabel, can actually do damage. But this does self damage as well. 
and we can. It costs one quarter power, and I, if I remember right, yes, the, the target of the strike is free, right? So we don't. We would need a core for it. Uh, we were, might also want more health so that we can actually use it more often. It might make it might be more useful to keep than the target of the strike. Although the target of the strike has been amazingly helpful, having a uh, the unstable cannon, it does it pushes in both directions and does damage in both directions. And actually, with the armor that we have, we wouldn't actually take actually come to think of it, with the armor we have, we wouldn't take self damage unless we powered up the uh, upgraded the unstable can cannon to do three damage to the enemy and two to us. And it's cheap. It's on sale. Uh, I don't know. It might be worth. It might be worth getting instead of the airstrike. Doing more damage to an enemy, a, a two or three damage weapon, instead of a one targeted anywhere. Might even be worth getting it instead of the grappling hook, to be honest. But uh, I don't know. The other problem is the pushback. Yeah, we'll always have to account for the pushback. Or that will end up killing us or destroying buildings or something. I'll think about it. Gemini missiles. Oops. Gemini missiles. Range class weapon. Launch two missiles, damaging and pushing two targets. Now, do the two targets have to be spaced like that? I don't know. The downside of this uh, little weapon purchasing area is we don't get a chance to test the weapons to really understand how they work before we buy them. We have to go. We only have these little gifts to go off. Um, so I assume it means you target two tiles that are either side of where your mouse is or something like that. That's always in that spacing relative to each other. So three damage is absolutely nothing to sneeze out. Three damage in two places is brilliant. It's only a single use. Right now, uh, in our range class, we have that's that's Rockstar. We have the passive ability that either pushing enemies into each other or when they take damage from a spawning enemy, either way it's two damage instead of one. And that is a passive ability, so it applies in every mission all the time, and that is, I think, more capable than these than these missiles. As fun as these missiles look to be. Uh, I'm kind of talking myself into keeping the secondary weapons I've already got, except perhaps buying this instead of the airstrike, and that's cheap. And it's cheap. So that's the reason I'm thinking about it. So we could get some reactor cores, upgrade our power, and still get this, and not have to sell off all our pirates. <laughs> Donate, sorry. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So first things first, let's get our grids back up. Let's. Uh, Alright, so that's one. We need seven total, so we need... We don't we don't want the full tank, so we're going to donate the full tank. Uh, now, the, the, the good thing about this being on sale is... Uh, it's, if we decide to donate it later, we'll get one for it anyway. It'll be cheaper, so... You know, there's no real harm if we decide we don't want to use it. We can sell it back next time. Uh, so, Ganymede... Or Lauren... Well, Lauren's been through previous timelines, but I don't know that that matters. Uh, Ganymede is plus three grid and plus two mech HP. Lauren is plus one move, plus three grid. Neither of them have special skills. So which is better, extra HP or extra movement? Uh, to be honest, we can always use cores for extra HP or, or for that matter, extra movement. Um, but extra movement on its own is better, so I'm going to donate Ganymede. Yes, he's going to stay on archive and help them archive things. Being an AI, he should be good at that. Good at that. That gives us seven cores, so let's grab this unstable cannon and two reactor cores, and we're done. I'm not going to leave just yet. What I'm just going to do is swap out that unstable cannon. Uh, let's just power it up there so we can test it. So, for example, let's say we sit here and use our unstable cannon that way. That does a lot of damage. Unfortunately, some to us as well, but not much. The armor stopped the self-damage from the cannon. The armor also meant 
Oh, sorry, we only also took one damage from being pushed into the enemy while they took two, because the passive ability that does two damage only applies to Vec, not allies or uh, ourselves. So... That's pretty cool. Again, this is this is a bad way. This is a bad way to shoot because it'll push the enemy into the building, right? But uh, yeah, it's not bad. Um, if we try with plus one damage each, if we do plus one damage each, then we will take one damage when we fire, even if we're not pushing into something, which is. Unfortunate, but it only means we only use it a few times a turn. But it, th doing three damage is, you know, 50% better than only two. And three times better than uh, only one. So it's probably worth having a core on that. So, I think we can change our mind next mission. I mean, I just, I'm, well, I didn't install any calls. Alright, I'm just going to revert that. I'll look, I'll look at uh, the next mission that we have and decide which to take on the mission. But probably I'll take the unstable cannon and power it up a bit more. Uh, that was that was our setup, right? Uh, two cores. So I won't look at how I spend my cores yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this an episode. Uh, well, no, I'll leave the island to see see what we get. Island unlocked by completing three islands. You've unlocked detritus disposal. In future games, you'll be able to visit unlocked islands in any order. So I've never actually been to this island before. So we'll find out what that is next episode. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you here for the next episode. If you're watching the stream right now, I am just stopping for a quick tea break, and I'll be back in five minutes. So, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, see you in the next episode.